what up bros good morning i hope you're doing well thank you for being here today i want to talk to you about something very 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 specific and something that's very intriguing to me what if i told you i had tips and tricks and i could teach you the way that i have been pricing items out and the way that i have made a lot of my money now if you're an expert in the idea of using awakened path of trade or path of exile and you're an expert at using the trade website maybe some of these tips and tricks aren't for you maybe there's something you do better maybe there's something that you can teach me and i would love to hear about it great place to do that would be the comments down below come join me in discord or just hang out with me on twitch but for now i wanted to talk to you about a few things that i've noticed while hanging out in other streams hanging out in my community and talking to a bunch of people and that is awaken path of exile trade or awaken poe trade or however you want to call it it is an add-on that I use. It is an add-on that a lot of the community uses. It's a lot add-on that I've noticed some of you guys just don't know exist. And that add-on is this, as you can see on my screen right now. Awakened Path of Exile Trade, or Awaken PoE Trade, offers us a lot of very interesting tools, both from map rolling, to dump sorting, to searching for skill gems, to even a cheat sheet for our syndicate. Now, if you don't know how to turn this screen on and you have PoE Trade or Awaken PoE Trade, you hold Shift, you press Spacebar, and it opens this. It also has a nifty settings feature in the top left up here where there's a cogwheel. That'll let you change all the settings. And if you're an expert in navigating this and you're an expert in doing this, this is awesome. This is great. I didn't know how to do a lot of this, and you guys have been teaching me, and I'll, I want to pay it forward and show you guys how to do it. Now you could search in Awaken PoE Treat for a lot of things. To change your chat settings so that you can go to your hideout very quick. A lot of people don't know this. You could press F5 or change whatever hotkey you want and this will bring you straight to your hideout. F6 is a logout macro if you're playing hardcore or you just wanna log out quick on League Start or log out quick while you're playing. You can even set presets with this to like message people. But that's not for here nor there. The focus of today's video is to just give you an idea that this software exists. This software is fantastic. And if you want a copy of this software, you can find it down below in the description. I have posted a link there for you to be able to go and download it. It's extremely simple to use and extremely simple to install. It updates regularly, especially on league launches. And I really, really recommend just keeping an eye and making sure that you're on the most updated version. Otherwise, things get a little weird. But for now, I wanted to talk to you about pricing, how I do my pricing. If a lot of you guys have been to the stream, you notice that a lot of the community doesn't really know how to sell things or doesn't want to bother selling things. So they bring them to me. They ask me for a price. I throw them in one of my 4,672 dump tabs and I've listed items and I've been selling items every day for players like you who just don't know what to do. And as a trader, it's awesome. I sell your item. I get a little money. You get a little money. We have a great day. It's a lot of fun and you can go about your business. And while I'm streaming, I can advertise your items. The win-win. But now you say to me, hey, like, I want to sell things. I want to make a bunch of money. You do really well in this game. How do I do that? And how do I make the most of my items in the game? And what can you show me that I already don't know with how to price things? Well, we're going to take a few simple things and we'll go into a complex item and then we'll go into an even complexer item and we'll kind of go down the list of things that you should be looking at and things that you should be taking care of. The first thing we're going to start with something really, really simple. We're going to take an opalescent oil we're going to price it and the basics of pricing is very simple we're going to hover over our item we're going to hold control on our keyboard that's ctrl we're going to press the d key d as in david and it's going to bring up a window like this the minute i move my mouse it's going to close out so i press control d do this shift spacebar locks it if there's an easier way to lock it on the screen please tell me i would love to hear about it i do not know leave me a comment because this is the way that i've been doing it for years and if there's an easier way to do it i'd love to hear about it now, if we're looking at the screen, we see that opalescent oil. It says on top 5.5. In the drop down on the right, it says gold is 39. Silver is 17. Opalescent is priced at 5.5. And black oil is 2C. And then the oils go down the list. We'll notice too in the window that it says matched, stock, and a couple other things, and a trend. See the trend this says that opal and oil is down 17 percent over the last seven days we can see that we're stock is one as in we have one we can see match is 109 so we're looking at 109 results at what the prices are and we see that there's 
eight of them, if I click this, this little divine button, listed them for divine. This tells us the price per unit. In our case, one unit. This tells us the divine per bulk price, which is I get one divine for 23, and which this guy is selling. This guy is selling at one for 20. The next guy, one for 20, one for 15, two for 27. And you can see their stocks, how many times they fulfilled it, and how long ago it was listed. In our case, we're not going to be looking at bulk sales, as that is another video for later. And if we have time, we'll touch on it in this video. In our case, we want to look at our Opal Lesson Oil. Awaken POE trade tells us this 5.5 C. The average player will see 5.5. They'll go list it. They'll get 5.5 C. They'll be very content. But what players don't know is how to look at these numbers and take this information and bring it to the next level. Now, if I look at this, I see, wait a minute. This tells me 5.5, but this guy has it 7 chaos for 1. That's interesting. Then I start looking at the list. 7, 14 for 2, 7 for 1, 7 for 1, 7 for 10, 7 for 1, 28 for 4. And I start to see, wait a minute, maybe there is a market here. And maybe the market's actually a little bit higher than what Awaken POE is telling me. Awaken POE says 5.5. The graph and charts are showing me 7. There's even some hints at 8. Now, if you're like me and you've tried to buy anything on the trades website and you go through the first 10 people, none of them answer anyways. And we just assume they're either busy, mapping, they don't have time for the trade, they're price fixing. It could be a number of things. So we always end up paying more for an item than what we need. In that case, if you know that's going to happen and you know that's something that you have dealt with, other people must be dealing with it too. So you could probably comfortably list your opalescent oil for 8C. Now, if you're like me and you want to move the opal fast and you need quick money in and quick money out, you're going to put it at 7 and you're going to sell it. We're never going to put this at 5.5. It's going to sell immediately. We're going to immediately lose money for all of the 10 seconds it takes to list it. So I would advise in this case for opalescent, list it at 7. If you really want the extra C and you want to min-max your profits, list it for 8. Let it sit for an hour or two. But in my experience as being a blight oil seller, and somebody who's been doing this a lot, I would look at this chart, I would say seven is a comfortable number, and I would list it. I'll do the same thing now for silver, where I'll click on my silver oil, and I'll see the same thing. Awaken POE trade tells me it's 17 chaos. The chart tells me 17 chaos, but looking at recent sales, there's one for 10, seven minutes ago, that's been sitting, we know that's probably not accurate. There's one for 15, one minute ago, and then we see a bunch of them that have been sitting. Two minutes, one minute, two minutes. If I just keep a track on this and refresh this every so often, I'm sure these values will change. And now I can list my silver oil at 17C and take a quick sale. I can list it at 10 and take an even quicker sale. I can list it at 15 and take a quick sale. But looking at this, this comfortably tells me that I can list my silver oil at 20C and it will sell. We just like wait a couple minutes. We'll actually come back and take a look at this again. But as you can see, the number of 17s have gone down and we have the possibility of making more money. Now, I'm sure you noticed there's been a tiny little cut and I wanted to wait a few minutes. I actually needed to top up on my cup of coffee and I wanted to come back and check the silver oil. Now, if we bring up the silver oil again, you'll see the numbers are fluctuating all over the place again and there's less 17s, more 20s. And this is the point that I'm making. There are a lot of items this league that are fixed at a lower number uh and they have been selling very fast when they shouldn't be and i'm a big fan of selling things at a fast rate i'm a big fan of making quick money but there are some items that i'm not going to sell this silver oil for 10 when i can get 17 and i just wanted to take a second wait a few minutes update this and show you guys and the same things that will apply for any item that we pick in the game our scold oil here we see there's one for 38 one for 39 and a bunch for 40 the macro tells me I could sell it for 39. Then you're going to say, that's really simple. That's really, really easy. I know I can do that on a lot of items. I know I can click a divine orb and I could see the prices. Now, did you know that if you click a divine orb and you come up here to the top left where it says 151 and I click this button, it'll give me the breakdown of how much divine is worth in points, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. I know a lot of more advanced players are going to see this and go, yeah, I knew that. I know a lot of more mid-tier players are going to see that. And I say, I know I knew that. But I do know there's going to be somebody out there who's going to be like, oh my god, because I didn't know about this until this leak. I've been using this macro for a long time now. I never knew about this, and this was game-changing for me. So, now we've seen how to price things. Price very basic things. We've seen that things can sell in bulk and currency. 
Now here's a question I have for you. Do you know how to bulk sell out of your tab? Probably not. I know I didn't. And do you know that you can bulk sell everything? A lot of people say to me, well, you do all these blights and you get all this currency. How do you bulk sell? Do you do one trade at a time? Do you do five trades at a time? What do you do and how do you do it? And a good buddy of mine, Moreau Third, spent some time teaching me how to do this. And Twitch chat was just like, oh my God, you didn't know this? You're silly. Let me teach you. We're going to take our stack decks. We've been farming up a bunch of stack decks doing our blight maps. And if you haven't been doing your blights, let me tell you, I have found the best blight build in the whole world. Oh my God, you should go do your blights. This blight build is crazy. I'm just sitting there and I'm like, bang, 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 and blights and mobs are booming. Uh, it's exploding in the bridge with the boot, the uh, hoot and that. Oh my God, bro. We got to talk about this blight build, but this, this is for later. Oh my God. Blight. Oh my God. Anyways, stack decks. I get it. Talking about blight, I get excited. I have 426 stack decks. I'm going to personally open them, but there's somebody watching this video who goes, you crazy. You sell them. You sell them. Now I'm going to look at my stack decks. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press Control D, Shift Space Bar, and I'm going to bring up my stack decks. Individually, we sell that there's, we see that they're selling for one to one or two to one. Odds are you can get two chaos for your one stack deck because people want to buy stack decks. People are in the point in the league where they want to gamble and it's a good time. But if I click the divine button right here, you'll notice that stack decks are selling 80 to one, 78 to one, 77 to one. And you too can list your stack decks and you can list them in bulk. So now what I'm going to do for a test while I'm doing this video is I'm going to take off D and D. I'm going to open up my stash. I'm going to make my stash tab, which is a premium tab public. We do this by right clicking on the little tab. We hit the public tab up here. We're going to each item individually. I'm going to come down to my stack decks. I'm going to right click it. You're going to see this box pop up. I'm going to select that. I would like the exact price that I'm negotiating. I would like the exact price to be in the vine orbs and I'm going to list them. I'm going to go one slash 77. This means that you will give me one and I will give you 77. In this case, the vine orbs. So you will give me one divine for my 77 stack decks. And then we wait. Now to get this to update and to get this to process, I will actually change zones as it changing zones Put your item on the trade site faster and refreshes. And we're going to leave this for a few minutes to see if we get any hits while we continue talking about the video. Now, I can do this for a lot of things. I can look at like my yellow life force and I can bring it up and I can see yellow life force is about 18, 17, 1600 for divine. I can look at the individual price of life force. I can look at my orbs of dominance. I can do the same thing. I can see 1.6. I can see 1.7. Odds are I'm going to sell this for 1.7 because I can get more money. And I could price out all of my items. My Grand Eldritch Elder, Grand Eldritch Ickers, if I look at them in individual prices, I see they're about 2.8 per unit, which you can see right here. And if I go to Divines, I see I can get 60 per Divine. Now I would just, you know, do the math. Does 2.8 times 60 come out to the cost of a Divine? Probably not. 2.8 is... Uh, that's three times six is a buck 80, right? 2.8 round up to three because nobody's going to do in twos. So 2.8 times three calculator. Oh, actually I'll do it on the computer because it'll be better. The calculator, I do 2.8 times 60, 168. And then I go look at the price of dying orbs. We sell it in chaos. And just like that, you're starting to become a pricing wizard. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Now, I know a lot of you guys say, well, currency is easy. That's great. Bring me to something harder. Show me how to price something a little bit more difficult. And I have a couple of items that I've priced out over the last couple of weeks and that have been selling. And we could take some simple things. We could take some gloves. These look like gloves that you just found on the floor. And this is what we would do. We press control D on the gloves, shift spacebar to lock it in place. And then we kind of take a look at the mods. Now, if I click on this hidden button we'll see that the fire as is hidden and we can just take a look at the overall on the items if i wanted to search specific base of the item up here in the top it's category gloves i can click this again and it'll change the specific base that i have in some cases checking the base is well worth it and will net you more money especially in fractured items but in our case we're not going to go that deep because that's another level and we'll leave that for later so right now we're going to take a pair of gloves with evasion rating a pair of gloves with elemental resistance and we're going to take a look at 
the different items that are on it. We see that the Awakened PoE mod tells us we have an Incursion mod, which could be useful to some players. And we see that we have Spell Suppression on it, which we know Spell Suppression is really good. Sudden Block Recovery, we really don't care too much about. And Added Fire Damage to Attack, or Added Lightning Damage to Attacks, is another mod that may or may not interest people. If we search all of these mods together and we hit search, it's probably going to yield us nothing as this is an extremely interesting pair of gloves and we want to kind of refine our search a little bit to what players would need. So we're going to cut it down and we're going to start at the basics. We're going to start with an evasion pair of gloves with some dexterity with some resistance on it and we're going to hit search. You notice that our search yields a lot and I mean a lot of results with different eye level items ranging in different listing prices and listing dates. Now, let's refine our search a little bit more. Let's add the Temple Incursion mod and hit search and see what happens. We've noticed now that it is 20C, 34C, 1 Divine, 1 Divine, and 1.5 Divines. This tells us that adding the Incursion mod by itself increases the price in some number. Now, we don't know if we have a 20C item, and we don't know if we have a 1 Divine item, and we'll get there in a minute. If we click on Chance to Suppress Spell Damage and we refine our search a little bit more, we see that there's no items listed. So... What we're going to do is we're going to now back up a step. We're going to take off spell suppression. We're going to research again, and we're going to hit this button right here. This button will bring up the trade website in another window, and we'll start taking a look at the gloves. So we'll move the gloves over to the side so we have some more room. Let's make this window a little bit smaller so we can work on it, and we'll just start comparing our gloves that we have to the gloves on the trade website. We know this the first pair of gloves has 48 fire resistance. We know that's the temple mod, so we... I already know that's always going to be there. We look at a second resistance of 24 cold. We have 25.5. These match pretty well, but we notice our gloves have spell suppression. These gloves don't. Neither pair of gloves has life. Life is usually a big selling point. So we could probably say that these two gloves are pretty similar. Spell suppression giving us a little bit of edge. And then we go down the list. Once again, we look at a pair of gloves. This time we compare our pair of gloves with a pair that has a higher percent of cold resistance. This tells us that those gloves are worth a little bit more as a tier of colders. This is higher than ours. Fire is always going to be the same because it's a temple mod. Fire damage to attacks always roughly going to be the same. If we scroll down a little bit more, we start seeing that the gloves have life on them. They have an open, they have an open suffix, and they get a little bit more refined and a little bit more tuned to something more the average player would use. If this pair of gloves had an open suffix or an open prefix, I would recommend crafting life on them and then listing them. As looking at this pair of gloves, very similar to ours, because we have spell suppression versus attack speed, and we crafted some life on them, we'd probably get 100 chaos. Versus if we list them as is, we get them for 20. And that's just the basics of what I do. I take an item, I look at the mods, I break down each of the individual mods using the trade macro, and I start comparing them side by side. I do this quite often on stream, and if you're on stream and you want me to price an item or try to help you out, I can't price every single item, but I can teach you the ways to price your own items. And we can go over a couple items and I can just give you a simple rundown. I know there's a lot more advanced players who are probably still at this point in the video and they're kind of giggling or they're kind of laughing or they're kind of saying that's not how I do it. And if there is a way to do it or it is a better way to do it and you can help me teach me and make me a better player and I could teach them or you could teach them by teaching me, I, let's do it. Let's get together and let's do it because that would be great as you both help me and the community. Now, we've looked at a pair of basic gloves. We know kind of like what they're worth. And let's go take another item. Let's go take this that was given to me by my friend Hato. And he said, dude, do me a favor. Just get rid of it. Sell it for whatever. I just want some money. Put money in my pocket. Let's call it a good day. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to control D, shift space bar. And now the mods and everything get a little bit more complicated. <coughs> the Eldritch mods add another level to the item and both make it more expensive and less expensive. And we refine our searches eventually based on the Eldritch modifiers. The first thing that we're going to do is we notice that the helmet is enchanted with Molten Strike fires two traditional projectiles. If I select the base, which is a Lion Pelt, and I select Molten Strike, I'm going to take a look and see if there's any results. We're going to do the base very specific on a helm that's enchanted from labs because certain bases with certain enchants are worth a lot more money. I've learned this from watching my lab runner and talking to other lab guys, and I know anything that has a helm enchant, you want to double check the actual base that it's on, and the lab enchant with it, which is just an extra click, and we can see what we're working with. We see right now that the helmet with the lab enchant, 20C, 20C, 1 divine, and 1.5 divines. So I'm going to take one quick second. I'm going to pull these up, and I'm going to take a quick look at them. This was listed 14 days ago. Odds are it's probably not selling. This was listed two days ago. This was listed a month ago, and this was listed three hours ago. The interesting thing that I'm noticing here 
this one not selling is probably nobody really wants a lion pelt with no mods on it for molten strike and that tells me two things one lion's pelts and molten strike in combination probably aren't used very often two maybe a lot of people aren't playing molten strike three maybe nobody wants to craft their own helmet because anybody playing molten strike might not be a, a one percenter and or know how to craft their helmet so they probably want to have something that's already crafted for them they could search up and buy and not have to worry about it me personally until this league that was me i don't want a white helmet i don't want the helmet chant on it give me a helmet that's crafted and done put the life on it for me i don't want to touch the bench i don't want to touch crafting let me buy it and crafting let me tell you has opened my eyes to a whole new world which i will help you in a future video because it would be too long for right now going down this list i see just a bunch of interesting things i know this one's never going to sell as the same reason as the one above as it's got like next to nothing on it this one though is interesting this one was listed three hours ago this has spell suppression rarity cold resist life some eldritch mods on it this may sell to somebody who's playing it but we're gonna go with not so i'm gonna go back to my item and i'm gonna start doing other things and start looking at other tiers of pricing i'm gonna take off the helm i'm not gonna search by lion pelt anymore i'm gonna search high i'm gonna search evasion so we're gonna lower this number we're gonna search high elemental resistance we're gonna search a basic amount of life and we're gonna just see what we come up with now we notice right now there's a ton of helmets with a ton of different values so i'm gonna put back in not my full evasion rating but a high close to the same amount of evasion rating to see if there's anything else and we see once again our prices are pretty borked and the helm is probably worthless with just these mods so let's kick up the evasion rating again back to similar to what we're at slightly underneath because matching the exact same numbers isn't usually going to happen we see once again that the helm enchant is giving that our helmet value the life and resistance on it not so much now what we're going to do is we're going to put on we'll take each of these mods individually and take a look let's take a look at if mana reservation of efficiency and hit search this by itself with life and resistance kicks the helm up to one divine telling me that this mod by itself has a huge weighted value now if we look up crafted hits we see there's nothing let's use some rarity we see there's nothing and we already know there's nothing with molten strike as we already look so let's take a look at life regen and we see there's something listed for 23 divines six days ago very interesting so i'm going to grab my helm i'm going to throw my helmet to the side i'm going to pull this up and i'm going to compare this has spark fires three edition projectiles on it pretty cool pretty cool ours has molten strike his has way more life way more evasion lightning resistance we have fire the resistance type doesn't matter as we can change the resistance type and harvest mana reserve we have mana reserve we have rarity he doesn't he has a higher life than we do we don't we have crafted hits on it he has no room mm, he has an open soft prefix i think he has an open prefix hard to tell you look you look you would look at these and count these so like one suffix once so like this is this is suffix this is suffix oh I, he's full he's full right one plus one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's full so suffix 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 prefix prefix this is this tells me the ones tell me that they're um tier one and this is tier five so this is tier five this is tier one these two tier ones together give me the life so he has two tier one life rolls and then he has um a hybrid life roll. oh look our ancient orbs are selling uh i don't know if that's the accurate price if it is i am 100 taking this oh no see look i can sell them eight to one but i mean i'm not gonna complain i'm gonna take nine and i'm gonna i'm gonna run away so let me uh pause for a second awesome that was an easy sale and you'll notice well i took the item out i did this exact same thing i typed one for eight just like everything else and hit the vine orb all right let's go back let's put dnd on now let's go back to what we were doing Okay, so we looked at that helmet. Now, something that I wanted to compare that's not available or interesting yet is the Eldritch Implicits. <laughs> we've looked at the Helm Enchant, we've looked at the life, we've looked at the resistance, we looked at the evasion rating, and we've looked at and compared another helm. Let's take a look at if we just take off the evasion and we do life, resistance, 
and double mana reservation let's just take a look at what we're at we see that we have a helm for two divines two divines two divines and they're looks like they're non-evasion rating helms now let's add on the crafting mod and see what we get nothing let's take a look at damage recouped as life Ooh, so damage recouped as life mana res mana res life resistance 30 divines let's once again take a look at what we have spectral helix on a pig face bastonet probably adds a lot of value this helmet has plus two to aoe gems spell suppression area of effect mana reserve and life this will probably sell maybe not for 30 but it'll probably sell for like 20 maybe 18 depending on special helix players who want the helm enchant and how much they value it plus they value these mods being done so i could take a look at this helmet and i could say man i have a life roll i have a life regen roll which is pretty big for a lot of builds i have rarity which in this league is huge i have resistances i have mana reserve i have mana reserve i have fire damage recouped as life i have fire physical taken as hits and I've got a lot of things and a lot of mods that together don't exist, but in large quantities together, yield a high value. I wouldn't say this is a 30 divine helm. I wouldn't say this is a 20 divine helm, but I would say this helm is probably worth more than one divine. So what I'll do, and this is my pricing tactic, and this could be different than you. So I'll start this helm at 15 divines. I'll go do some light maps. I'll hang out. It's a Sunday afternoon, 11 a.m., it's prime EU time. It's about to be prime NA time. I'm targeting two different markets. Later this evening, about 8, 9 o'clock at night, the EU market will go to bed. The West Coast will be thriving. So over the course of day of the playing, this helmet will see a lot of different markets and a lot of different players. And if it doesn't sell by, say, 7 or 8 o'clock Eastern, I'll lower it to 10. I'll lower it to 9. I'll make adjustments based upon the market, and I'll recheck it and reprice it later. If somebody whispered me or saw this helmet and said, hey man, I'd like to give you eight or nine divines. This is a, I'd like to, this is my offer. And the helmet's been sitting for more than 35 seconds. You offer me nine, I'm going to take nine. And this goes into the same argument of money in quick, gives me more opportunity to buy more items, to do more farming, to do more things versus letting this helm sit for hours. I'm not going to teach you in this video about the idea of letting an item sit for three or four or five or six days versus taking a bunch of money now and using that money to make upgrades. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But I will list this helmet. I will go work on this video. I'll keep the game open. I'll do some stuff. I'll go stream. I'll run some blights. And if it sells for 15, I'm thrilled. If it doesn't and I get an offer for 8, 9, 10, I'm going to take it. By tomorrow, if the helmet still hasn't sold, I'll lower it to 10. If I get an offer for 7, I'll take it and let it go. I'll lower it to 5. And if at that point it still hasn't sold, it sits at 5, it rots, or sits at 3, it rots. And if somebody buys it, thrilled if somebody offers me one i take it that's days from now we're not even worried about that now we'll reevaluate that later not bad so we've covered basic currency items individually we covered a mid-tier item that we would have found off the floor that we would just list i'm gonna put this up for like 75c i'm gonna do the same thing i'll let it sit if it sells yay if not worry about it later we've covered a more complex item and then we look at something like this we say, dear God, Ebile, what, what in God's name did you make? My buddy Ebile makes these crazy items in the Discord. He hosts classes. So if you're watching this and you're like, how do I do this? My Discord, he's in there. I think he's in there right now at the time of recording. Um, let me take a look. Recording right now, he's actively there. Hey, man. I'm doing a video talking about you right now in the video. This is live. I'm recording. And they hear me typing to you. Anyways. Now this wand, he said, if it hasn't sold, give it back. I want to use it. <laughs> it's in a video now, Ebile. <laughs> we're going to take a look at the wand. And we're not going to look at any mods yet. We're gonna actually press this hidden button and this hidden button shows us nothing, which is great. I was hoping it would show us something. So we're not gonna play around in the hidden button. <laughs> I was looking actually was this synthesize mod, which is on my screen and I'm blind. We're gonna press the synthesize mod. We're gonna hit search. The first thing that we see is just this synthesize mod on one shows us a 45 divine one, an 80 divine one, a 400 divine one, and a 450 divine one. Mine's the 400, I think. 
right? 400. Yeah, mine's a 400. So I'm going to pull this tab up. And I'm going to take a look at these wands. 45. Looks like it's just the base. This guy found this on the floor the way that it is. 80 divines. It looks like he started crafting on it. Not too bad. You can see it's got spell crit. Tier 1. Lightning gems. Tier 1. Double damage. So this guy worked on this for a bit. Ours, you can see right away. Spell skill gems. Physical skill gems. And then we look at the big one. Big one. The 450. I said, what the heck? This base immediately worth way more than ours. Spell damage per dex, critical strike chance for spells, explodey. We only have explodey. This guy, just like ours, spell skill gems, physical skill gems, spell skill gems, physical skill gems. We have accuracy. He doesn't. Accuracy is probably not as wanted. He has extra spell damage or non chaos damage, has extra chaos damage, which is huge damage. 74% spell damage. We have 70. We know that when we crafted this one, we went for this mod and we missed a nulling off this mod and going again would have been a nightmare. We didn't want to do that. We went for cast speed with Arcane Surge. He also went for cast speed and Arcane Surge. He has crit multi. We don't. We both have crit strike chance. We can redo. We can redo our suffixes to get crit strike multi, which would probably be a really good idea. Would probably cost us the extra 40 divines to make it there. But we're not going to do that. We're going to list the one for 400. We're going to take an offer at 350. We're going to let it sell. Now, this is how I price this wand out. I would go. I would put my mods in. I would look for something similar. I know if I broke this down into individual mods, I would find extremely similar things for way less price. And I know the one thing that's pushing this wand over the edge is the enemies have a chance to explode. And that's the first thing I looked for. And that was the only thing that came up in terms of wands. As you see, if I hit the search button, I have wand, non-unique, explode, take this off as the only thing that searches. I hit search and I get seven results, assuming more wands have showed up in the last minute. This guy looks like he's worked on his. It's got spell damage, double damage, and he just kind of like started working on it. Probably ran out of money, listed it once somebody else to finish it. 35 divines on the base. Not too bad. Uh, you'd probably have to rework some of it. I don't know if I'd pay 35. I'd probably actually make this guy an offer at 20. And if he took it, I would go for it. I'm actually going to, like, literally, like, tell my buddy about this because this is what he does. And Okay. Anyways. That's how you would take a more complex item and start looking at it. You would just take a mod, get a huge result. And we know synthesize is unique to these wands. Your synthesize is just a unique item base. And we begin pricing it. Now, I know a lot of this is over the top of your head. I know that a lot of this is a little bit complicated. And I know a lot of this is a little bit spooky. But take your time. Price things out slow. If you don't know how to price things out and you've gone through the steps and you've gone through the process and you need some help or need some advice, the community is great. There's a ton of people that will help. I have created a POE pricing channel where if you are watching this video, you can go to my Discord and you'll see a channel. I can't guarantee a bunch of people will look at your items and try to price it for you, but you can post an item. You can say, this is what I've priced it at. Do you think this is fair? Do you think this will work? X, Y, and Z. And we can go from there and see if we can help you out. But for now, if you found this video informative and it helped you, please let me know. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe down below. If you want to come check me out live, I'm going to be going live right after this video is posted. I'm going to be hanging out. I'm going to be doing some more blights. We've been working on a blight ravage strategy that's been out of this world. We think we've cracked the code with how to maximize the amount of chests that you get from Blight. And there's a couple other really cool things that I'm testing out with Blight. I have a whole video working on. I've been doing a lot of work with the Bearded Fox DM. Big shout out to you, my friend. And him and I have been creating some really good information for Blight that we think will blow the Blight market wide open. Um, no spoilers yet. I've said earlier in the video that I'm playing an EK Ignite build for Blight. It's actually bonkers, out of this world, crazy for Blight. Probably the best Blighting character I've ever played. And... You want to see it? Come on by. Over the next few weeks, once again, we'll be working on our character a little bit more. We'll be working on teaching the, the trade, the craft. We'll be working on crafting. We'll be hosting crafting classes in the Discord. And we'll just be like, hanging out until the mini events start. And then after the mini events, we'll practice our league start. So if you found this video informative and you like everything you see, don't forget to subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and do all that fun stuff. For now, I'm going to go work on this. I'm going to get this out to you guys. And I'm going to go head on over and do some more Blights. So long, farewell, good night, good afternoon, good morning. See you guys later.